Good morning, everybody, and welcome to episode 15 of Coffee with Canvas Consultancy. Good morning, all. Welcome to episode 15 of Coffee with Campus Consultancy. It looks like I am rolling solo this morning, and it's awesome to be here with you. What that means is I've got a link, um, and I would love to bring you on the show if you'd love to have a chat this morning. If you're listening in, pajamas are welcome. Anything is welcome. We can talk about leadership. We can talk about your week. We can talk about planning an organization. But if you've been tuning in to some of the last 14 episodes, um, this is really a chance I'd love to just chat with you. And we don't need a structure. People say that they love just listening in while they're making breakfast in the background. So in an Ask Me Anything style, I'd love to hear from you. What are you thinking about? Do you have a leadership question? Do you have a student engagement question? Entrepreneurship, emotional intelligence? Where's your head at on this Friday? Or are you just loving that if you're in Melbourne, it's rainy outside. I'm so glad that the rain is here or another part of the country. What, what's it like for you? What's in the mug? Let us know and I'll load up the stream now so we can see some of the comments. So if you're listening in this morning, uh, we are going to be talking about Leadership, we're going to be talking about different ways that you can obviously be a leader in your own life, that you might lead in the community. Max jumping in this morning. Good morning, Max. Max, I'm just posting a little link in the comments there, my friend. If you're awake, if you're with it, I'd love for you to jump in and join me. Come on and say hello. I'd love to catch up and figure out what you've been doing since you've made the move down to Sydney and everything with your work. Um, so good morning, good morning, good morning, Jerry. Good morning. I know, 15 episodes already. We've... Um, We've been going along. We've been going pretty consistently. It's been nice having a good range of guests. Uh, it's been really awesome having different people jumping in on the comments too. Uh, and maybe that's a good place to start. Like, what does it mean to do 15 of something? We had a really nice conversation maybe a week ago, a Canadian guy named Joel Hansen, and he put out a post uh, yesterday that was talking about the idea of setting a failure goal. And I thought this is really, really cool. So the idea of a failure goal is to try to fail at something, try to put something out into the world that even if the worst possible situation happens and you do it 10 times and 10 times consistently, it doesn't work. That's what you're achieving to do. And I like this mindset of a failure goal because one of the ways when I thought about LinkedIn Live, uh, going live every single day, I was like, okay, what's the worst thing that could possibly happen? Well, maybe it'd be a massive failure. No one would watch. Guests wouldn't be interested in coming on. People wouldn't comment. Uh, it wouldn't be something that I enjoy doing. I said, even if I do that for 10 days, what am I really losing? What's the opportunity cost? Oh, I'm going to miss out on my 8 till 8.30 in the morning. Well, I'm having a coffee anyway, tuning in and listening to something on YouTube or listening to a podcast. Let's try it. Let's experiment. And even if it doesn't work, I'll learn something. And changing my mindset from it needs to be success and something that's award-winning um, to something where I learn even if that initial learning is kind of hard, has been a really powerful mindset change for me. Um, so if you're listening in, is there something that you are striving for this week or strove for this week that you didn't achieve? Is there something that when you're in a leadership role, where that's leading in your own life, leading a team, a community, a project, is there something that you've gone after and it hasn't worked? And what have you learned from that experience? So we're tuning in. Uh, Max, good morning to you. Um, Tom, lovely to see you jumping in there on, on the likes as well. Great to hear from you, my friend. Jerry as well. And Santi, good morning to you, my friends. So we're talking leadership on an Ask Me Anything style. I'd love to know what's on for your week. What have you been thinking about? Uh, what is there that in the leadership space is top of mind for you? Um, now, while we, we cross over into this space, and by all means, feel free to jump on and have a chat. I think I'd share with you some things that I like to do at the end of the week. So as I bring up just in even my other tab of my computer open right now, if I look back on my calendar this week, one of the things that I like to do in the leadership space is think about how I'm using my time. So if you're building yourself up as a leader, if you're building up other people as a leader, if you're building up people in your community as leaders, the one thing, one of the things that really unifies all of us, we have the same amount of time in a week. We have 168 hours in a week. And how you use that time is really, really pressing. So with a little bit of luck, I'll be able to see if I can share with you a stream and I'll be able to reflect on my calendar from a previous week. I will be able to, amazing, so let me bring this up. And I'll share with you, uh, not from this week, but from a previous week, my calendar and how I look at it and think about it. Um, now, the reason I want to share you this week is whenever I share my calendar publicly on LinkedIn, I always make sure for privacy, I block out everybody's names. And for this week, I haven't blocked out everybody. So I'll bring up a previous calendar and I'll show you exactly how I think about reflecting on the week. I think one of the telltale signs of effective leaders who are growing is how much time they spend in reflection, um, as well as how much time they spend in planning and action. 
And you can spend too much time in any of these areas, but intentionally moving between the three of them has been something that's been really powerful for me. So I'm gonna show you an example of a previous week and exactly how I think about reflecting on the end of the week. Open up now and see if this is going to work for me. So I'm gonna share my screen with you right now. Share the application through PowerPoint. I also use StreamYard, so in case anyone is ever wondering about how I actually use this or think about this, I've all, all got this show off the ground for, for the low, low price of, I guess, $20 a month that I can go live every day. Um, if you're ever wondering, StreamYard is a platform I use, which is very, very cool. I absolutely love it. It's a great platform. All right, so I've, I've got this up here. Uh, this is my, this is a calendar from a previous week. Now I cropped out the month and I always forget what month this was, uh, but sometime late last year. And so at the end of the week on a Friday, uh, it's interesting actually, that's funny. Uh, the, the red line indicates where I was. Uh, so if you look at Friday, just before the travel at 9.15, uh, when I screenshot it, that's where I was in reading and reflection time. And now it's 8.07, so not too dissimilar. Uh, I like to set aside some time at the end of the week. So you'll notice here I've got an hour at the start of the day on Friday and an EOW reflection at the hour at the end of the day. So in both of those one hour periods of time, or when I'm doing some reflection, uh, I find between an hour and two hours a week is a really sweet spot for me to reflect and think about, am I using my time well? So why are we talking about time management and leadership? If you want to be a better leader, if you want to help more people, lead a project, your time is a unifying factor. We all have 168 hours. How you spend it varies. All right, so let's dig into this a little bit. Now, if you use a calendar, I'd love to know. Jump into the comments and let me know. Do you use a calendar? How do you use a calendar? What sort of calendar do you use? Jump into the comments and let me know. Is it Google? Is it paper? Um, how do you think about managing your time, prioritizing in your week? Uh, for me, it's Google Calendar. I really like it. But if you use something else, I'm really open to, to different ideas and things that might work for you. Um, so jump in, let me know what you use. And for me, I'll walk you through sort of how I think about it. So at the end of this week, one of the things I like to know is, as an engineer, 168 hours, how am I spending them? Well, let's figure it out. Google Calendar lets you use different calendars. Now this week, obviously gyms are closed and I'm not traveling and I'm not in person. Um, so it, actually, if we were to look at this whole week, it's a really good comparison to where I am now. Almost the only thing that is consistent with what I'm doing now, with what I was doing six months ago, the only thing are probably these little yellow slots, which are my planning time and maybe, okay, posting on LinkedIn. Uh, but even here, I'm posting on LinkedIn throughout the day. I've scheduled half an hour to post. And one of the things I'm experimenting with, that sort of light blue post on LI, I'm changing that to putting that at the front of the day. And I'm doing my LinkedIn posting in the morning. Uh, and that's where I'm putting that half an hour. So that's probably consistent. The yellow time's consistent. One of the things you'll see there is I batch my time. So around emails, around planning, I batch it into an hour a day, two hours a day. Um, so I don't sit there with the tab open the whole day long. But everything else in my life got flipped upside down when it came to my work life, when it came to COVID. You know, these trainings where I'm traveling to different places and interstate, the travel was all gone. Um, the dark green, which is all the travel time, was all gone. Now, that turns out to be quite a blessing in that I actually love traveling for work. I really genuinely enjoy it. Um, I read and listen to podcasts, but I got that time back. Um, and all the meetings that you'll see, the dark, the purple, Coffees, coffees, meetings to catch up, that face-to-face -face interaction, which I love so much, was taken away. Now, we get it in Zoom, and Zoom is amazing, but it's very different. It's very different sitting across a table from someone sitting um, through a screen. So things change. So how do I use this to help me at the end of the week? Well, first, I start by adding up the amount of hours I use in each category. Now, I know if you've ever used the metaphor of sort of rock, sand, and water in a jar, and let me know if you've heard of this one, that if you want to prioritize and figure out what are the most important things, you need to put the rocks in first. And so the idea is if you have a big jar and you put water in first, then the sand, then the rocks, it overflows and all the big things don't fit in. But the best way to use the space, because rocks have gaps in them and they don't all add around, the best way to use the space is to put the big things in first, the rocks in first, then trickle over all the little things and they scatter around and then put the water in and it fills it up. And so with this, when I look at my week, I know my rocks, the big, big things, and say an example for this week, was I'm looking at uh, the red columns, which they're where I'm presenting workshops that are actually have an impact. I'm with students, I'm with staff, I'm with leaders. And if I add that up, we've got on Monday, we've got, okay, eight hours doing that, uh, one hour on, on the Monday, sorry, eight hours on Sunday, one hour on Monday, that's nine hours, plus two, 11, plus two at Griffith on the Wednesday, that's 13, plus one and a half RMIT on the Thursday. So that's what I say. 
11, 13, 14 and a half. And then on the Saturday, seven hours. So it's 21 and a half hours. So in that week, 21 and a half hours went towards the big, big, big priority, which is actually the end goal having the impact. I've also got six hours, which is a dark blue on lecturing. So lecturing at the University of Melbourne on a social enterprise course. So that aligns too. So I'd say from 22 and a half up to 28 and a half hours with students in front of students. Uh, but to make that happen, lots of other things have to keep the business growing. So one of the early things I learned from a leadership perspective is it's not just enough to do the fun thing, standing up in front of students. You've got to do all the supporting work that helps, one, make that possible from a planning standpoint, hence all the yellow, but two, possible from a business standpoint and a sustainable standpoint. Whenever we lecture on the social enterprise, we always say, you cannot do any good if you go out of business. You need to stay in business. So for me, a large part of, say, the coffees, the little purple meetings throughout the week, is I know in this week I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven coffees. And each of those coffees are calls or interactions, and maybe they were with some of you who are tuning in, that not only help us figure out what is it that students need and how can we help you as organizations, but they also keep the business moving forward. I learned very early that if I wasn't having coffees in my week, uh, if I wasn't exploring the different things to help the business grow and help serve the people we want to serve, then next week I don't have these beautiful red slots where I'm actually out there working with and serving people. So I'd love to know how you think about your time, your week. I'll keep digging into this. I want to jump in the comments and see what other people are sort of saying. Um, so we've got, oh, lots jumping in here. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, Sass. Catherine, good morning. Great session on EI. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, the session, Kath, is just jumping in from Latrobe. Kerry's just commented down below. So Kerry, if you're still listening to, to me as well, a little bit higher up in, I saw your comment, a little bit higher up. Catherine Kilms from Latrobe University has just jumped in saying she really enjoyed that session. So uh, Kerry, you're absolutely amazing. I really, I love that session with you. I, I learned a lot. Um, I had a lot of fun. So thanks for coming on. Um, that session was a lot of fun. Uh, Sian says she's a bullet journal. I love that too. The bullet journal is really interesting. Um, Sian, feel free to jump on. Come on and talk about what is a bullet journal? How does it work? How do you think about it? Josh Furman saying, Apple Calendar for me, need that iCloud synchronicity. Yeah, I know. So the one of the things I love about uh, Chrome, Google Calendar and Chrome, that the calendar syncs across my phone and um, my internet browser. I use Apple products, I'm not an evangelist for it necessarily, but... Uh, it works across both for me. Interesting that you're you're an Apple fan as well. Jerry's using, I close off email, emails at the end of the day, making sure that I have less than 10 emails in my inbox. Nice, very, very nice. So that idea of like, can you hit the, you know, the mythical inbox zero? Can you get it right down at the start of the, at the start of the day, at the end of the day, close off that day without a huge list of tasks can be really powerful. Um, Estelle, I'd love to know what podcasts you recommend. Okay, cool. So one of the things that I'm traveling, and I, well, especially when I was traveling in, um, whether it's now walking around the block, going to the gym when those reopen, or just in the kitchen cooking breakfast sometimes or, or whatever it happens to be, um, some of the podcasts I absolutely love. So I joke around with some of my friends of like the big four. I love listening to Tim Ferriss. He's amazing. I think he's one of the best question askers I've ever heard. He's incredible. The Tim Ferriss show is really, really good. I'm um, from like a marketing, just get your buddy in gear, do stuff every day. Don't let it, don't let uh, self doubt hold you back. Gary Vaynerchuk or Gary V experience, I really, really like. Um, if you listen to Gary V, you have to listen to 10 episodes because if you listen to one, two, or three, you might well hate him. And he says that quite publicly. He's like, who didn't like me at the start? And everyone puts their hand up in the air. But if you get deep in that, I just think he's amazing. It's all empathy, kindness, patience, self awareness. So he's brilliant. Brene Brown podcast is really, really good. It's new, but it's it's a great one. I really love it. Um, the Tony Robbins Archive podcast is great. They found a whole bunch of old Tony Robbins um, talks. And the Tony Robbins podcast that he releases currently had a really great interview recently with Sarah oh, from Spanx. What is Sarah's last name? Sarah Blakely. You got to mix up with Sarah Lively. Sarah Blakely from Spanx is one of my favorite. If you listen to one podcast today, Sarah Blakely from Spanx on the Tony Robbins podcast, the way she talks about her journey and how she hustled and just the reality of it. Um, as someone who be became a billionaire as a female entrepreneur and was really celebrated um, because she was one of the early Americans to do that. Um, absolutely amazing. Just brilliant. And the way she talks about vulnerability in the journey is something that's really, really insightful that, that I loved. So, Tim Ferriss, Tony Podcast, Gary V. I love Brene Brown. Um, I'll pull it out on my app, actually. I'll see if there's any other good ones that I've been listening to this week. And I'll fill you in. And if you've got podcast recommendations, jump in the comments. Let us know. Don't let this just be what Josh listens to. So Estelle and Tadis, Tagus, Estelle, 
uh, McCabe in the comments. If you've got cool podcasts that you like and you listen to, um, put it all on the line. What else do we have in here? Oh, The Work Life by Adam Grant is very, very good. Um, that's a great one. Produced by Ted. Super produced, but really, really interesting. Very work related. Ted Talks also has a podcast. So you can listen to Ted Talks and just download them for free. Listen to the audio. You know, if you don't necessarily need to see someone standing on a red dot every day. Um, the Lewis. Yeah, Lewis Howes, Jocko, Tom Bilyeu. Uh, very good. Marie Furlow has a really good podcast. I like Marie Furlow's podcast. It's interesting. She has a, she's a very, very prepared Tim Ferriss-esque, um, very prepared, high production value. Her YouTube videos are awesome too. Uh, On Purpose by Jay Shetty. That's a really good one. I like that. Um, yeah, Jay Shetty has some really interesting guests on, particularly he takes a very like soulful, monk-esque approach to podcasting. So that can be a good one. So anyway, heaps of recommendations in there if you're into it. Um, Kerry saying, uh, jumping in the calendars, and thanks for the question, Estelle. Uh, Kerry's jumping in. I like your calendars to organize my calendar. It looks quickly. Glance in the morning works for me. Yeah, and this is a big thing too. Like when we're looking at, when we look at the calendar and we think about how does this help you lead? How does this help you build and grow as a leader? One of the things that I think about with this example of a calendar is that it lets me look at my day and put the things that, you know, if I have a really important meeting or if I really want to get an important piece of work done, I'll put it right at the front of the day. Um, so in this week when there's lots of travel, sometimes I'm like a bit at a bit mercy to the travel schedule so I can get as much in and do as much good in the week as I can in terms of impact. But one of the big things I'm looking at is if I've got like, so today, for example, um, if I look at my calendar for today, I've got a really nice session, three workshops today, one at nine until 10.30. But then I've got a, an interview uh, that I recorded and hopefully publicized interview uh, from 9.30 till 10. So when I was offered a couple of times for the day, it was really nice to be able to book that in right at the start of the day because that lets me focus in on something that's really important, really high value uh, that I can do when I know I'm my best when I'm high energy at the start of the day. Might not be for everybody, but if you're like that, looking at your day and thinking that first hour of the day, what can I schedule in there to help me grow, to help me do whatever I know I need to do as a leader today? Let's kick that Let's uh, kick that one off or tick that one off right at the start of the day rather than pushing, pushing, pushing to the end of the day. Um, so a couple of other things when I'm looking here, I'm looking at, um, I'll add up the time for each slot in the week and I'll say, okay, how many hours in meetings, in travel, in preparing, um, in... Um, in in workshops and that gives me an analysis and then I give myself like somewhat of an arbitrary you know zero to five how happy am I right now is this week helping me get the results that I want am I enjoying what I'm doing and I'm passionate about what I'm doing have I over scheduled myself and honestly with the week that I'm showing you here like I no longer I almost never run workshops on weekends I mean I have one next Saturday for two hours uh, but almost none on weekends because what I realized was I actually get more joy when I get it done in the week and I have more time for friends, family, relationships on the weekend rather than sort of scheduling in that stuff um, too heavily during the week. Um, so, yeah, so one of those things was like looking at it, adjusting, always pivoting, always trying to learn, okay, what did I learn from this week? Um, so if you're thinking right now, if you're listening in and you're like, okay, what do I actually do? How do I think about this, whether I have a calendar or not? Try to answer this question. What did you learn this week? So what did you learn this week about what you like? What did you learn this week about what you don't like? What did you do this week that you're going to keep doing, stop doing, and start doing next week? So five questions. What did you learn this week that you like? What did you learn this week that you don't like? What are you going to keep doing, stop doing, and start doing into next week? And it's a simple, simple framework, but you can apply that to how you spent time on the computer, what shows you're watching on Netflix, uh, what you're doing with your work, what sort of clients you're working with. Are you enjoying working with your clients? Are they stressing you out? Are you enjoying working with your students or your lectures or your assignments? Um, and one of the things I wish, honestly, I'd asked myself earlier in my university degree is, you know, if I'm not loving these subjects, you know, I'm a great uni, great degree, great professors, great people, but it wasn't a good fit for me. And I wish I'd sat down and just said, okay, am I liking what I'm studying this week? Not really. Okay. What about next week? Okay. Still not really. And one, two, three, four years later, I probably should have cottoned on that maybe that wasn't for me. It just wasn't the right fit. Now, the world needs engineers, but it just wasn't the right thing for me. So doing this analysis at the end of the week um, on a how I spent my time, and that's an output basis, then I dig a step deeper into outcomes, uh, which I'll jump into and chat about in a second. Um, so this has gone very quickly into a deep, deep dive on calendar. So I hope I hope that's okay with you right now. Uh, it's a bit impromptu. Um, Brenda jumping in, totally agree. The first thing, first thing, do the most important things. Absolutely love that. 
Um, I love that, Brenda. Uh, and Brenda, one of the things I think you'll appreciate this that I did this morning was one of the things, one of the key uh, touch points for me this week are we're supporting uh, five different groups going through social enterprise projects um, for, a, for an unnamed college. And one of the things I did this morning was look for relevant articles and activities that related to their projects. So there's a, a project sponsored, I think it's by Rio Tinto, the Future Mind Accelerator, which has just announced 12 ed tech startups that it's supporting. And so one of the groups at this college is running, is looking to run sort of an ed, ed tech kind of platform around mentoring. So I grabbed that list of 12 companies, sent it through to the students through a calendar invite and said, hey, check this out. Um, so they now have 12 things that they can dig into the day for a bit of inspiration. So some of the ways I think about starting that day is if you've got something really important to do in your own world, but also some of the most important things you can do are just give to other people. Can you inspire someone? Can you share with someone? Like right now on the phone, bring up, um, bring up your phone, go to your messages, go to someone that you meant to message, that you've been meaning to message, that you love messaging, go to someone that makes you feel like your best self, whoever that person is, and send them a message and say, this weekend, text it right now, this weekend, can I call you? Can I speak to you? Are you free next week? Can we do a virtual coffee? Do you want to have a wine today at 4.30 p.m.? I love sending some of my like close friends a random calendar invite for a 4.30 or a 5 p.m. wine chat. And just saying, look, I miss you. I want to hang out with you. Can we catch up? Um, so if you're thinking about that right now, can you be the person who goes first because the leaders go first? Reach out to somebody on the phone and say, I'd love to chat with you today. Or send them a LinkedIn message or an email or a Facebook message, WhatsApp, WeChat, Instagram, DM. It doesn't matter. Um, because the first thing you do today be to set up your reward for the end of the day. And that's been a huge thing for me. So you'll see in this calendar that I'm sharing on the screen, at the end of this week on a Friday, um, I have dinner with Steph, who's my partner. And so I know no matter what, as long as I get on that, it was probably, where was I? I was at uh, Peter McCallum. Okay, I was doing TEDx practice for my TED Talk that week. But uh, so I was, at, you know, I was at Monash. I know that if I get in the Uber or the bus or the whatever I took to get home, if I get in that at 5.30, I'll be home at 6, I'll be with Steph for dinner, and that's my reward for the end of the week. So one of the concepts I often speak about in building leaders is leaders don't sacrifice the joy in life. Often people who I see who are running businesses are really happy running organizations, whether you're in a place where they're joyous and they're passionate, they're, they're building more joy and energy and passion into their life. They're not sacrificing the fun things. You can acknowledge that Netflix is awesome. Pizza is awesome. Chocolate and cake and coffee and a glass of wine responsibly consumed, they're all awesome. So we're not saying cut them out and have no fun, but can you use them as rewards? So one of the things I'll do with my time in my calendar is, now I'm much better at it now, is I'll schedule in those rewards, not just on a Friday night, but on a Tuesday night or on a Wednesday night. Um, at the moment on Mondays, the Michael Jordan documentary is out, which I love just as, as someone said in the doco, he might be the best person at his job ever, which is quite a title. So I love that on a Monday night, I know I've got two hours of guilt-free Netflix for the next three uh, three more weeks of tuning in and just watching someone who is truly, truly world-class. And so watching that, consuming that, being around that inspires me. I'm like, why can't we celebrate on a Monday night? It doesn't have to be a Friday. Now, I love celebrating on a Friday, don't get me wrong, but those little celebrations throughout the week can be really, really powerful. So I'd love to know in the comments, if you're listening, if you're, if you're enjoying this, if you're getting something out of this, and I appreciate, I mean, episode 15, that you've tuned into any of these, um, how do you celebrate the end of your day, your week, your milestones? Um, we're a third of the way through the year. It's the 1st of May, one whole third. As a country, and now I know with some people overseas, but in Australia, bushfires at the end of last year and the start of this year, floods in large parts of the country throughout this um, early parts of this year. Um, and then obviously COVID, plus the day-to-day -day challenges of, of working, of trying to grow your business, grow yourself, develop leaders. As a student, you're in the middle of semester or trimester, uh, whether you've got exams or they've been changed into assignments, you're in assignments, you're trying to connect with family and friends, lots of international students tune in, we're living away from family. You're a third of the way through the year and you've done an awful lot. So if we wanna focus on building leaders, it's a day by day building. Um, I think if you have a happy Friday, a happy Monday, a happy Tuesday, that helps you to have a happy week, you have a happy week, you a couple of those in a row, you have a happy month, a couple of happy months in a row, you have a happy year couple of happy years in a row and I think you're really on the right path. Now you might have a really hard day, a really hard week, maybe a hard month or even a hard first three months of 2020. But looking at where you spend your time, in my opinion, is the, one of, if not the single biggest, one of the biggest unlocks in how to make sure you're spending time in places that help you grow, 
You're spending time in places that help you give and you're spending time in places that you can be truly grateful for what you're doing. Now, if you layer that up with people who make you feel like your best self, then I think you're on for a real winner. So at the end of the week, I'm looking at outputs. I'm looking at where I spend my time. I'm looking at outcomes. How many students uh, have we worked with? What have they gone, gone on to achieve? Um, did they enjoy it? Did they learn things? Are they applying it? Do they need support? Constantly looking for ways to value add. Um, but then moving forward, I'm thinking about, okay, well, what can I learn from this week? So the week I'm showing you is from last year. But if I was just to pull up in my own tab my week this week, I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19 Zoom meetings this week. So 19 Zoom meetings, that mean, meant I got to speak with at least 19 people. So I can look through each of those. And when I'll have weeks of meetings, I'll put the names of everyone I met with down. And then next to those people, which I normally do on an ongoing basis, I'll add in, what did we talk about? What did I learn? What's the next step? Do they need anything from me? Did I say, oh yeah, I'm going to send you this or send you this book or, or write up this blurb for you or send you a letter of reference. Make sure that I've written all of that down. Make sure I've ticked it all off. And if I haven't ticked it off, letting them know that I'm going to get to this as soon as I can, schedule it in my calendar for next week and say, you can expect to receive this from me by this day. And often I found, I've actually never had someone write back to that and say, oh no, I need it sooner because I'm trying to bring it as forward as far forward as I can. But I think because I'm so transparent about the calendar and how, you know, how much we've got going on, um, we're always trying to get ahead of the ball. People are so receptive and welcoming to that. Um, so if you're a student right now, how do you apply this? If this week, look at how much time you've been studying. If you look at your calendar, you should be able to tell me instantly, how much time did you spend studying this week? Because those blocks of time could be locked into your calendar. And if they're not, maybe next week, set aside some blocks of time. See if those blocks of time work for study. And then at the end of the week, say, okay, this week I studied nine hours. Okay, is nine hours getting you the results that you want? And if it's not, the week after, okay, maybe I need to study 12 hours. Or maybe I'm just not studying in the most effective way. So maybe I need to go and spend an hour learning how to be a more effective studier, finding one, two, three friends that study really effectively, get really good grades, or have careers they love, the metaphor that carries over depending, uh, independent of career or academics. And think about what can you put in your calendar next week to make your week better? Where can you reallocate some time to be more productive and have more joy in your week? And for me this week, if I've got 19 or so one-on-ones and interactions, I'm going to think about for those people, am I touching base with some next week? Um, do they need anything from me? Does that lead to future work and future workshops? Um, what do I need to do to keep that conversation moving forward? Um, and at all times, it's listening, it's empathy, it's trying to understand, um, and then it's prioritizing that I'm delivering in line with my mission. So this week, I had some amazing chats and some people were like, it'd be awesome if you could do this. And I'm like, I know someone who's way better at that than me. That's it's a real need. I'd love to help you. I think the way I can best help you is introduce you to someone who can help you even more than me. Because um, one of the things I've got as I've got busier and busier is we want to help build leaders all the time. I've got a LinkedIn inbox full of people that I'd love to help. And sometimes the best way I can do that is be very humble and say, look, this is not, this is not my next area of expertise. The workshop, yes, definitely. The learning, the application of it, yes. But how to get a specific career in a specific area, let me introduce you to three people in that area who I know. And for me, that only takes a couple of minutes, but hopefully for them, that's an introduction they can use and foster. So if you're a staff member, if you run a program, a college, a faculty, I'd love for you to look back on this week and even just a list of the students who you met with one-on-one. -on -one. Each one of those students, was it five, 10, was it 20, was it 50? And are there, if you've got the capacity for all of them or even some of them, is there half an hour you could sketch out today with a list of all their names and think about what's one thing extra that you could give to them? Is it just an email back to that same calendar invite that says, you know, hi, Emily, that you met with at Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Hi, Emily. Um, just reflecting on our conversation this week, referred to this podcast today. I heard about it in a LinkedIn Live. I think you might really like it. Here it is attached. Have a great weekend. Or is it, hi, Johnny, from Wednesday at 2 p.m. Um, you mentioned connecting with someone in IT. Um, I did a quick LinkedIn search. Here's a screenshot of my connections in IT. If you'd like to, me to introduce you to any of them, just let me know. And there's some little touch points you could do with the people you've met this week, whether it's team members, group members, colleagues, clients, students, that at the end of your week could just be half an hour of feel good, of just reaching out, giving a little bit more and just seeing what comes back. Um, I definitely don't think they'll be mad about it, but it might just be that little extra piece that shows them they weren't just a half an hour slot in your calendar, but that was either the start or the continuation of what could be a really deep and long relationship. 
Now, this has been a deep, deep, deep um, dive into our calendar, somewhat unexpectedly, but when we talk about building leaders, one of your things that you can take control of first and foremost is your time, how you spend it, and how you prioritize it. So like the jars, uh, like the rocks in the jar, put the big rocks in first, big rocks in first, and then the things that can scatter around that that have some flexibility, trickle them over the top. Things like that, it might mean your plan for next week, doesn't matter if you do it at 1 p.m. or 2 p.m. or 3 p.m., that can move around. Um, your email time. Most people, if you reply to an email within an hour, two hours or a day, they're pretty flexible. So can that email slot work around your big priorities and not letting all the tabs take over, but the deep dive into things that's really matter be reflected in your calendar? Because how you spend your time and how you prioritize is clearly shown in that calendar if you record it. You can't manage what you don't measure, so I really recommend at the end of today, at some point today, look back on the week, where are you at? What are you, What did you really enjoy? What did you not enjoy? What are you gonna keep doing, stop doing and start doing that might make next week 1%, 5%, 10% better? And then just keep doing that. Do it for 10 weeks. Keep trying to make the week better and better and better and see where we're at after we're at the next third of this year is over. Um, Brenda's jumped in and said, such a gift to be able to help others with things you know aren't yours to take. I absolutely love that, totally. Totally, totally, totally. And so one of the things, what is one of the things this week, if you're listening right now, that you've got that you could give away that doesn't cost you anything? Is it a comment on someone's post? Is it a message? Is it an email? Um, is it a resource you can share? Is it an introduction to someone in your network? Um, even in LinkedIn, you can start chats that have multiple people in them. Just hit new conversation, write someone's name, write someone else's name. Dear Brenda, I'd love to introduce you to Sally. Um, Brenda's a great friend of mine. She does A, B, C, and D. She's an expert in what in this. Sally is a second year student. She's really interested in, in leadership. She's really interested in studying in Texas. Uh, she's would love to connect with someone who's been to a university there. I know nothing about it. Uh, is there anyone you know who could help her? Connect people together. Um, we ran a session yesterday around motivation. And one of the things we dug into was this idea of having a plan, which we're talking about now, but people. People plan progress and purpose as four Ps. But the people thing, I think, is a real unlock. And on the Friday, when people are starting to, to reflect on their week, they're starting to look forward to the traditional weekend where they connect with more friends and family. Who's someone who you can connect with? Who's someone you can connect somebody with? And what's a gift that you're able to give to somebody that, as Brenda says, it's not yours to take, it's yours to give. So on Friday, episode 15, talking about building leaders, think about where you spend your time and how are you spending your time to invest a portion of that in building up others. Could you schedule in an hour next week, two hours next week to do some mentoring, um, to invest in doing a one-on-one -on -one with someone, to sending emails to points of contact that you have? And if this is you, if you're thinking about how do I build myself up as a leader, look at where you're spending your time. And can you reallocate some of those things to learning, to books, to TED Talks? We say leaders are readers. So can you put half an hour in your week, uh, in your day, each day next week? And can you set aside, even if it's two and a half hours throughout the week, reading articles, reading a blog by someone you like, following someone's LinkedIn posts um, or sitting down with a book and just digging into it, going a little bit deeper. So a deep dive into those concepts today. I hope there were some things in there that were helpful for you. Um, I've really enjoyed sharing this with you today. It's been a lot of fun um, to dig in and share some insights around, around calendar, around scheduling, around intentionally using your time. Half an hour tends to fly in the morning. So I hope you have a wonderful Friday. Um, thank you for tuning in. If you've tuned in for a few, we're 15 episodes deep. Um, We've been supported by Impact Partners, Kua. Um, Kua's making world positive coffee, supporting families and farmers in Uganda. So if you're interested, if you've enjoyed today, screenshot, I can never get the finger thing right. This is something I've got to master. If you can screenshot this right now, screenshot this post, here is Kua. Kua is amazing. You can support Kua. If you've enjoyed this today, um, supporting Kua, can I point and wave at the same time? Maybe not, that could be a skill for next week. Share this, tag campus, tag Kua, let them know that you're tuning in. It's been absolutely amazing to have them on board. Uh, and if you're interested in getting your hands on some awesome, well positive coffee, um, share a post, tag a comment, let us know how you like your coffee, even just in the post. How do you like having your coffee? We'll pick someone lucky, send them through to Kura, and they'll, they'll mail you out some of their great coffee at the end of the week. So thanks for tuning in. Have an amazing Friday. Shoot me through a message. If you're working on something, if you've got a question, if you're curious about something or or you're looking for that next level in your leadership journey, I'm always open to a conversation. I always make time for it. So thanks for tuning in. Have a great weekend. And I look forward to speaking with you all again soon and next week. And thanks, Alyssa. Lovely speaking with you too. Bye, all.